In the heart of a Huntington town, surrounded by rolling hills and winding streams, I grew up far from the flashy life of the city. Our small, worn-out house had creaky wooden floors and windows that looked out onto wide fields. It felt like a world all its own. It was here, with the simple warmth of family love, that my story began. My parents weren't rich in money, but they were rich in kindness and wisdom. My father, a local carpenter, had rough hands from years of work, but a gentle touch. He not only built furniture, but also taught me the values of hard work and humility. My mother, a schoolteacher, filled our home with books and stories, sparking my imagination and nurturing my dreams. Life in our small town was slow and simple. Neighbors greeted each other warmly, and community events were the highlights of our social calendar. I cherished this life, finding joy in the small pleasures, the fresh scent of earth after rain, the rustling of leaves underfoot, and the chorus of birds at dawn. It was at the local library where I first met James. He was different from anyone I had known. A visitor from the city, he had an air of sophistication but was unassuming. His family was well known in business circles, their wealth and influence extending far beyond the city's skyscrapers. But James, with his easy smile and genuine interest in my everyday tales, was a refreshing surprise in that world. Our initial conversations were cautious, like two worlds carefully getting to know each other. He talked about city life, the fast pace, endless opportunities, and dazzling lights. I shared stories of my town, the annual harvest festival, peaceful walks by the stream, and our close-knit community. In those early days, we often met at an old park bench by the lake, where we would talk for hours. The lake, with its calm waters reflecting the changing colors of the sky, witnessed our growing connection, weaving our different worlds into one. Laura, James said to me one evening, his voice tinged with a vulnerability I had not seen before. I have always been surrounded by people who care more about wealth and status, but with you, I found a peace I didn't know existed. You've shown me a different way of life, one that's real and full of warmth. His words stirred something deep inside me. James, where we come from doesn't define us. It's who we are when we're together that matters. You've given me a new view on life, opening my eyes to dreams I never dared to have. As our relationship grew, James told me about his family, especially his mother. She was elegant but had very high expectations. He spoke of her with respect, but also with concern. She has her own ideas about who I should be with. I'm just worried about how she'll react to us. I reached out, taking his hand and feeling a slight tremble. We'll face that together, I assured him. Love isn't about backgrounds or expectations. It's about two people who choose each other against all odds. The day James proposed was simple, just like our love. No grand gestures, just a heartfelt promise of a life together. As I looked into his eyes, full of hope and love, I knew this was just the beginning. The evening I was set to meet James's family, I was very nervous. Their grand mansion loomed large as we approached, a reminder of the different worlds James and I came from. James held my hand, giving me a reassuring look. Just be yourself, Laura. That's all you need to be. I smiled weakly, trying to calm my nerves. I just hope your mom doesn't think I'm out of place. James sighed, a hint of concern in his eyes. Mom can be a bit much. Just remember, I'm here with you. As we entered the fancy dining room, James's mother, Shirley, a tall woman with a stern look, greeted us. Her eyes quickly scanned me, a flicker of disapproval crossing her face. So this is the young lady who has captured my son's heart. Interesting choice, James. Dinner was elaborate, with dishes I couldn't even name. James's mother, ever the gracious host, offered me a plate with a sly smile. I suppose these dishes might be a bit too sophisticated for your taste, Laura. We can get something simpler if you'd prefer. I felt embarrassed but managed a polite decline. No thank you, I'm always eager to try new things. As the evening went on, her comments became more pointed. 
She eyed my dress, a simple but neat outfit, and continued to make subtle remarks. I had thought it was appropriate. Is that what passes for evening wear in your town? It must be challenging to find good clothes on a modest budget. James tried to change the subject, but his mother was relentless. Tell me, Laura, what do your parents do? It's always fascinating to learn about different walks of life. I answered, feeling her judgment. My father is a carpenter and my mother is a school teacher. Oh, how quaint, she replied, her voice dripping with condescendence. Hardworking people, I'm sure, but I suppose they couldn't offer you much in the way of a financial head start. The meal continued with her taking jabs at my small town upbringing, my parents' humble jobs, and even my salary, which she somehow knew about. Each comment was polite but sharp enough to hurt. James was visibly uncomfortable, and his attempts to defend me only seemed to amuse her more. As we left, James's father, Richard, pulled me aside and offered a kind smile. Laura, you handled yourself well. Don't let her get to you, she'll come around. In the car, James apologized profusely. I'm so sorry, Laura. I didn't think she'd be this harsh. I sighed, feeling a mix of hurt and determination. It's okay, James, I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I love you, and that's what matters. That night, as I lay in bed, the sting of his mother's words lingered. But beneath the hurt, a resolve was building. This was more than just about fitting in, it was a test of our love and my strength, and I was ready to face it head on. As the wedding day approached, the air was thick with excitement and growing tension. Shirley, who had taken it upon herself to oversee the preparations, seemed to find pleasure in belittling my ideas and choices at every turn. One afternoon, while discussing the wedding plans with James and his mother, the topic of the wedding dress came up. I had chosen a simple yet elegant gown that I felt reflected my personality. James's mother, however, had other ideas. That dress, Laura, it's so plain. Don't you want to make a statement on your big day? After all, you're marrying into the family, she said, her voice laced with a patronizing tone. James squeezed my hand under the table, giving me a supportive look. Mom, Laura looks beautiful in that dress. It's her choice, and it's perfect. But his mother was relentless. Oh, James, let's be realistic. This is a high-profile event. People expect a certain standard. Laura, dear, you should consider something more fitting of our family's status. I tried to keep my voice steady, though her words stung. I appreciate your concern, but I really love my dress. It's special to me. She waved her hand dismissively. Well, it's your day, I suppose, but remember, it's not just about you. It's about how you represent us, too. As the days went by, her comments became more frequent and hurtful. Marion criticized the flower arrangements, the menu choices, and even the invitations. Each remark was a subtle dig at my background and my inability to meet her high standards. James and I often talked about this late into the night. I can't believe she's being so difficult, James would say, frustration clear in his voice. I wish she could just see how amazing you are and how happy you make me. I would lie there in his arms, feeling a mix of love and sorrow. I knew it wouldn't be easy marrying into your family but I didn't expect it to be this hard. The wedding day dawned bright and clear, a stark contrast to the turmoil inside me. My parents and I had worked hard to make everything perfect despite Marion's constant criticisms. As I dressed in my simple but elegant gown, I hoped the day would pass without incident. The ceremony was beautiful, filled with love and heartfelt vows. James's eyes shone with affection and promise as we said our I do's. However, looming over the joyous occasion was the apprehension of the reception to follow, especially the speeches. As expected, Marion took the microphone, commanding the room's attention. The air was thick with expectation as she began to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, she started, her voice loud and clear. Today we have gathered to witness the union of my son James with Laura a person from a different circle. Whispers spread through the guests, and I felt a cold shiver run down my spine. She continued her words sharp and unyielding. 
While some may commend James for his charitable heart in lifting a beggar from the streets, we must be cautious. It's essential to keep our family's reputation and standards high, not let them be diluted by those who are clearly freeloaders seeking to elevate their status by clinging to a family of higher standing. The room fell into a stunned silence. My parents looked at me, their faces a mix of shock and hurt. James's face was a mask of disbelief and anger. The guests, a mix of our friends and James's high society acquaintances, looked on uncomfortably, unsure of how to react. My heart sank, and a deep shame washed over me. Her words were not just insults, they were meant to belittle and humiliate me in front of everyone we cared about. As she finished her speech with a forced toast to our future, the applause was hesitant and quiet. The room was wrapped in an awkward silence, the joy of the occasion spoiled by her venomous words. James stood up, his voice trembling slightly. I'm sorry, Laura, this isn't what I wanted. His eyes were filled with love and sorrow. I looked around at the shocked faces of our guests, feeling incredibly humiliated. Her words cast a heavy shadow over what was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives. The tension lingered after James's mother's harsh speech. Then, his grandmother, Mrs. Joyce, a respected and authoritative figure in the family, requested the microphone. Her composed demeanor and serious expression immediately drew everyone's attention. Good evening, she began, her voice clear and firm. I have something important to say. Laura, you have faced unfair criticism today, Criticism that no one deserves, especially not on their wedding day. I looked up in surprise, and James beside me seemed equally astonished. Mrs. Joyce then turned to Shirley. It seems we have forgotten our own past and where we come from. Let me remind everyone here, especially you, that before you were the lady of this house, you were a maid working under this very roof. It was here that you met your husband. A hush fell over the room. James's mother's face turned pale, her eyes widening in shock and embarrassment. Mrs. Joyce continued, her tone firm. So, for a former maid to stand here and scorn someone for their humble beginnings is not only ironic but deeply hypocritical. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. The room was silent, every guest hanging on to Mrs. Joyce's every word. You, who rose from poverty, should be the last person to judge or belittle another based on their background. We should be proud of Laura's integrity and strength, not deride her for it. The guests shifted uncomfortably, and whispers began to circulate. Shirley sat motionless, the impact of Mrs. Joyce's words clears on her face. In this family, we value character over wealth, kindness over status. Laura exemplifies these values and I am proud to welcome her into our family, Mrs. Joyce concluded, her gaze softening as she looked at me. The room erupted into applause, a stark contrast to the earlier muted response. Shirley sat there, completely humbled, her earlier arrogance replaced by a visible sense of shame. I didn't feel sorry for her, James whispered to me. I never expected Grandma to stand up for us like this. I squeezed his hand, feeling a mix of relief and gratitude. She's amazing. The rest of the evening felt lighter, the air cleared by Mrs. Joyce's honest defense. Guests approached with warm congratulations and sincere smiles. I felt like they were all on my side, and it felt great. As we left the reception hand in hand, I felt a renewed sense of confidence and belonging. Mrs. Joyce's words had changed everything breaking the cruel plans of a not-so-smart woman. The days after the wedding were filled with unspoken tension in James's family. It all came to a head during a family meeting at Mrs. Joyce's house, where the air was thick with expectation and apprehension. As we gathered in the grand living room, Mrs. Joyce began without hesitation, her voice firm and unwavering. What happened at the wedding cannot be overlooked. The way you spoke to Laura was disgraceful. She addressed Shirley directly, her eyes sharp. James's mother, usually so composed, looked smaller somehow, her usual confidence diminished. Joyce, I've already apologized to Laura, 
she said, her voice tinged with a hint of defiance. It's not just about an apology, Mrs. Joyce retorted. Your actions reflect on this entire family. You've become accustomed to a lifestyle funded by the family's money without appreciating its value. James's father nodded in agreement, his expression serious. My mother is right. You've lost sight of what's important. Mrs. Joyce then laid out her decision, each word deliberate and clear. I've decided to cut off the financial support you've been receiving. It's time you start contributing to this family instead of just taking. You'll need to find a job and learn to live within your means. The shock on Shirley's face was evident. She turned to her husband, seeking support. You can't agree with this. She can't just cut me off like this. But Richard surprised her. I stand with my mother on this. You've gone too far this time. It's for your own good. Shirley's eyes filled with anger and disbelief, her usual poise crumbling under the weight of her new reality. James, who had been silent, spoke up, his voice steady. Mom, Grandma's decision is harsh, but it's fair. You need to understand the impact of your words and actions. I sat there watching the scene unfold, feeling a mix of sympathy and relief. James squeezed my hand under the table, silently supporting me. The meeting ended with James's mother in a state of shock, slowly realizing her situation. She was clearly used to living off her family, and the thought of working gave her a headache. I could barely contain a chuckle. As we left, James leaned in close. I never thought I'd see the day when mom would be at a loss for words, but maybe this is what she needs to change. I nodded, feeling a cautious hope for the future. Perhaps this will be a new beginning for her, for all of us. The family reckoning had been tough but necessary. It was a pivotal moment that promised to reshape the dynamics within James's family, hopefully for the better. The honeymoon was a welcome escape for James and me. As we walked along the sunrise beaches, the soothing sound of the waves provided much-needed relief from the recent family turmoil. One evening, as we watched the sunset, James wrapped his arm around me. I'm sorry our wedding turned into such a drama, Laura. I wish things had been different. I leaned into him, feeling the warmth of his embrace. It's okay, James, it wasn't your fault. What matters is we're together now, away from all that stress. James sighed, looking out over the ocean. Yeah, but when we go back, we'll have to face the reality of my mom's situation. It's going to be tough for her. I nodded, understanding his concern. Maybe this will be a chance for her to grow, to see things from a different perspective. We spent our days exploring and our nights talking about our future. The challenges we had faced seemed to strengthen our bond, reaffirming our love for each other. On our last night, as we packed our bags, James looked thoughtful. You know, Laura, everything that happened made me realize how important you are to me. I can't imagine going through life with anyone else. I smiled, touched by his words. I feel the same, James. We've been through a lot but it's only made our relationship stronger. We can handle whatever comes our way as long as we're together. As we headed back home, I felt ready to face whatever the future held, knowing we had each other. I felt a sense of peace. The honeymoon had not only been a break from the chaos, but also a time for us to strengthen our bond and prepare for the new chapter in our lives. We were returning to a changed reality, but we were doing it together stronger and more united than ever. The future was uncertain, but I was ready to face it with James by my side. Coming back from our honeymoon, James and I were unsure of what awaited us at his family home. The car ride was quiet, both of us lost in our thoughts about the new family dynamics. As we arrived, the first thing we noticed was the absence of James's mother. Inside, we were greeted by his grandmother, Mrs. Joyce, who wore a knowing smile. Welcome back, you two. I suppose you're wondering about the changes here, she said, her tone light but with an undercurrent of seriousness. Yes, where's mom? James asked, looking around. Mrs. Joyce took a deep breath, her smile still in place. Well, after you left, Shirley caused quite a scene, 
demanding that I restore her financial support. When I refused, she decided to leave. She's now living in a small apartment and, from what I hear, is looking for a job. James and I exchanged glances, the news sinking in. It was a drastic change from the luxurious life she was used to. And there's more, Mrs. Joyce continued, leaning in as if to share a secret. Your father is considering a divorce. He's had enough of her antics. It seems like she finally pushed him too far. Well, she brought it upon herself, James said, his expression a mix of shock and relief. I can't believe it. I knew things would change, but this is more than I expected. I reached out, touching his arm. It's a lot to take in, but maybe this is for the best a chance for everyone to start fresh on a more honest footing. Dinner that night was oddly serene. The absence of James's mother was felt, but not in the way we had anticipated. The conversation was more open, and for the first time in a long time, it felt like there was a real sense of family. As we drove home later that evening, James was pensive. I always hoped for a change, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. It's going to be a big adjustment for mom, James said, breaking the silence. I nodded, feeling the weight of his words. It's a tough situation, but maybe it's a necessary step for her to grow, and for your dad too, to find some peace. Sometimes, change is needed for people to truly see what matters. The ride home was reflective, the quiet only broken by the hum of the car engine. We both sat lost in our thoughts, contemplating the new reality we were returning to. The family we left before the honeymoon was not the same one we were coming back to. It was a sobering thought, but also, in many ways, a hopeful one. As we drove through the familiar streets, I thought about how much had changed in such a short time. James's mother, who had always been a looming figure of control and criticism, was now facing a reality without the financial cushion she had relied on for so long. It was a dramatic shift, but one that might lead to her personal growth. Perhaps, without the comfort of easy money, she would learn to appreciate the smaller things in life and understand the value of hard work and humility. James's father, on the other hand, seemed ready to break free from the toxic dynamics that had ruled their marriage. His decision to consider a divorce was shocking, but it also held the promise of peace and a fresh start. For years, he had been caught in the crossfire of his wife's demands and expectations. Now, he had the chance to find happiness on his terms, without the constant strain of living up to someone else's standards. The family we were returning to was not the same, and that realization brought a mix of emotions. There was sadness for the pain and upheaval, but also a glimmer of hope for a better future. Change, though painful at times, was often the path to something better, and we were ready to face it together. As we pulled into our driveway, James turned to me, his eyes filled with a mixture of determination and love. No matter what happens, we'll face it together. This is our chance to build something new, something stronger. I smiled, feeling a renewed sense of confidence. Yes, we will. We've already been through so much, and it's only made us stronger. Whatever comes next, we'll handle it. We stepped out of the car, hand in hand, ready to face whatever the future held. The path ahead might be uncertain and challenging, but with James by my side, I felt ready for anything. Together, we would navigate this new chapter, embracing the changes and growing stronger with each step.